was they say, quit when you're ahead. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, anyway, that was extremely generous, uh, Javier. We're always so proud of you and all that you're doing to lead our nation and pushing us forward. You know, my mother taught me some manners, and so they always say, introduce a familia. And you know me as Maria Contreras, sweet. Well, the one who made me sweet is Ray Sweet. Thank you for being in the room today. <laughs> Um, and thanks to all of you for uh, showing up this morning. I know as an entrepreneur, there's nothing more valuable than your time. And the fact that you're coming here, not just to push for your own businesses, but to push our economy forward. You know, this town has seen so much of AstroTurf that when we get, you know, in the times of organic uh, uh, marketing, we know that true grassroots is what really um, takes hold here in Washington, D.C. This community needs to hear your voice and the fact that you're here to amplify the needs of the entrepreneur from around uh, the country is extremely valuable to us and to the nation. So thank you and a big applause to you and the great board of directors of USHCC. Thank you so much. It just, uh, it means a great deal to me to be able to receive something so prestigious from this uh, august group of people the fact that I have been watching you from afar and up close, always seeing how effective that every step is strategic, moving us forward, uh, really says quite a bit. And that you've been at the forefront of helping uh, speak up and, and uh, uh, being an ardent voice on behalf of every Hispanic entrepreneur who has helped to bring our economy back. Let me just take a moment again to recognize the important work that you have all done. Whether it's the issue of access to capital, federal procurement, workforce training, trade, or immigration reform, this chamber has been a vital force for the Hispanic entrepreneur. In particular today, it's March, which is when we celebrate women's histories, women's history, uh, and we celebrate the many contributions of women. So to all the women entrepreneurs, a special salute to you. But we still have so much more work to do to ensure our recovery and to make sure that we leave no one behind remembering that the day that President Obama was inaugurated, the Dow closed at 7,948. Today, it's hovering around 18,000. We've added more than 12 million jobs over 60 straight months of consecutive job growth. That's an American history. That's an American record. It's the longest streak that we've ever seen around the world. Our employment rate has fallen to 5.5% down from 10% in 2009. Janet Yellen, one of the most respected figures in the American economy, has credited small businesses for playing an outsized role in this recovery, creating two out of three net new jobs, as Javier just uh, attributed. More than ever before, it is Hispanic entrepreneurs who are driving our growth. We hear a lot about the developing BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. But considering their growth compared to the Hispanic American growth, the purchasing power in America of the Hispanic is expected to top $1.5 by next year. The American Hispanic market, if it were its own country, would be the 11th largest economy in the world, close to Mexico and larger than Korea or Spain. Soon Hispanics will have even more capital, capita per capita purchasing power than the BRIC countries. It's very, very powerful to see. I'm determined to work with you to make sure that we're nurturing this growth. Hispanic entrepreneurs have led this recovery and propelled America's rise. Last year, as you just heard Javier say, we at the SBA broke our lending record, and I'm back to even break that record again to make sure that you get the capital that you need. Some people in some communities have a wealthy uncle that stands in for them as a guarantor. With the SBA, you have Uncle Sam at the SBA. We're not providing just loans and loan guarantees. We're providing counseling as well. Throughout our offices, whether it's the Women's Business Center, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, our scores, our SBDCs, we're helping Latinos across the country get lender ready and learn about contracting opportunities. You know that the federal government is the largest procurer in the world, and the SBA directs 23% of that spend to small businesses. 
as you heard, this was the first time in about nine years that we have reached that goal. And we're very proud that we're able to direct billions of dollars to small businesses. But I've made inclusivity a fundamental theme of my work. Many of you know that I reframed the SBA to now stand for smart, bold, and accessible. We have deployed smart systems in new ways. We've changed our underwriting lies, laws and rules and regulations to make sure that we're really practical and responsive to the things that you need. When I arrived at SBA, that said that we had a nine month rule. If you didn't complete your application in nine months, we asked you to start over. That didn't make sense to me. I'm from Los Angeles and I can tell you that entitling and permitting in Los Angeles is not always easy. And so nine months doesn't always work. So why even have that? Take it out. Some people said to me that we had a wealth test, which meant that if you had somebody wealthy who stood in to help you uh, guarantee your loan, that then we disqualified you for an SBA loan. To me, if you're strengthening your guarantee on a loan, we ought to respect that and appreciate it. Those are the kinds of rules that we took out. Next, people said, the bank said, they didn't want to run the small dollar loans. And as a banker, I can tell you, the smaller dollar loans take just as long as the larger loans. And sometimes the larger loans come with better financials. And so banks generally want to steer away from the smaller dollar loans. We put up new technology for loans under $350,000. It's a new interface. And with that interface, when we green light it, the bank doesn't have to worry about your global cash flows or your EBIT or your uh, debt service coverage ratio. We just green light it. We will stand behind and guarantee that loan. Just a couple of weeks ago, I launched a new program. You're going to love this one. It's called LINK. And LINK is spelled with a C for capital. And what LINK does is, you know, you've all heard about Match.com, where you answer a few questions and then you get uh, some opportunities to date. Well, we thought if we could take that technology and have you answer a few questions and get you a date, but this date would be with a lender, uh, that we might be able to access uh, more opportunities for you. That program is already providing huge traffic flow. Somebody's got a problem. Uh, quite a bit of traffic flow into small community banks and into nonprofit lenders that otherwise would not have gotten traffic flow. So it gives you more opportunities and bankers more opportunities to meet you so that we can make more matches and more successes in helping you access the capital that you need. Those are kinds of the kinds of things that we're launching. And just in about 60 days, we're going to have a program that's going to completely transform the way we process our SBA loans. So we're going to be able to get them out to you quicker through e-consent, e-verify, and all those things that have been frustrating to you in the past. Um, without being in the weeds, let me just say that those smart systems have already had a huge effect in the outcome of our ability to break those records on lending. The bold is, I think that you know, in today's economy, particularly Latinos, with the wind to our back, we can now engage in international commerce so that the small florist shop doesn't compete with the local florist shop across the street. Now we form partnerships and we can go after a contract in Brazil. We can go after a contract in, in Morocco. We can team up and, and uh, compete in Dubai. And I'm seeing more and more of you engage in international commerce. So we're helping you, yes, with government contracting, corporate matchmaking, and international government loans. You know that our SBA export working product has a 90% guarantee. You gotta get your bank to offer that, uh, that loan. We've trained more than, uh, in our network, we've trained more and uh, counseled more than 300,000 Hispanics uh, in the last year. You know my story. I immigrated from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, arrived at the age of five, and it, uh, in, uh, the third grade, I became the milk monitor, and my grandmother said, you know, good job, but it's not the titles you have. It's what you do with the titles you have that matters, and that's what's got to propel us, what we do for others, and that's, that's what I know about the people in this room. We've worked hard, like I did, learned, uh, I had to learn the language of English, and then along the way, the language of business, but once we learned it, right, we knew how to compete. I started three different businesses, and after I left office as California Secretary of Business Transportation and Housing, I learned that through contracting, so many of you said, you know, we need surety bonds to be able to bid and do the work. 
And so the SBA has that product, and we want you to learn about that. I learned that we take too long to pay. So when I got here, I asked the president to launch a program that we call Quick Pay, where we now pay small businesses in 15 days. And for corporations, yes, thank you. And for corporations that pay you in 15 days, we will honor the same payment plan for them. So we're trying to get your cash flows going. So we are taking the lessons of entrepreneurship and bringing them into government. They told us that America was the land of opportunity and I think it has the potential and it has served us all so well. My story isn't unique, however. I know that so many of you in this room share a similar story where we got here, we learned the language and now we're competing in it. Immigrants are twice as likely to start a business and twice as likely to get a patent. Immigrants start nearly three out of every 10 new businesses in America today. Immigrants run 40% of the Fortune 500. And among all minority groups, Hispanics are the most likely to start their own business. Hispanic entrepreneurs now number more than 3.1 million strong. We contribute nearly half a trillion dollars to the nation's economy each and every year. Half a trillion. A few months ago, the SBA launched a public awareness campaign that I call Made It in America, the double entendre to promote the fact that so many of you are making it in America and you're manufacturing, you're making things in America. We need to celebrate the success stories and tell the world why we need immigration, why we need uh, the passage of this proposal that the president is putting forward. And I know you're fighting alongside us. We've been shining a spotlight on immigrants who've opened their their own business, put their neighbors to work, and achieve the American dream. And to help more of you, we're going to be the, one of the first government departments who's going to have a fully bilingual website. Very proud of that. Your stories inspire me and animate the work that we're undertaking at the SBA. In about a week, as you heard, I'm about to celebrate my one-year anniversary at the SBA, and I'm proud that these achievements that we've put in place are already uh, showing some success. I'm a banker, and numbers mean everything. So what are the numbers? We have now, across the board, an increase in our lending. Hispanic American lending through the SBA has gone up by 20%. Lending to women has gone up by 23%. And lending to African Americans has gone up by 36%. That's an incredible number, and we're very proud of that. Thank you so much. <laughs> we're creating an SBA that's as diverse as the communities that we serve, and that means inclusivity will continue to be my North Star, which is what the A stands for, accessibility to all. At the SBA, we talk about offering the three Cs, the capital, the counseling, and the contracts. I love hearing the small businesses that have used all three of us that come in and get counseled, and then they get a contract, and then we finance it. And I'm seeing and hearing those stories across the country. We're also facilitating, as I mentioned, corporate and international contracts. 95%, I know that you've heard this before, 95% of the world's consumers live outside of our borders, and only 1% of our small businesses are exporting. And the majority of them are exporting to Canada. We can change this with the proposal that we have before us, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So as we gather here for this legislative summit, we need all of you to be hands-on, all of us to be hands-on deck, so we can strategize for a breakthrough on exports. We can use this wind to our back and make sure that we can expand our businesses through export opportunities. I believe we can get Trade Promotion Authority and the Trans-Pacific Partnership done, but it won't happen without you. Recently, I was in, uh, asked uh, by the president to represent him in a, in a global entrepreneurship summit that took place in Morocco. And I can tell you that country after country, head of state after head of state with which I engaged, said to me that they could not believe that the US government directed 23% of their federal spend to small businesses. They couldn't believe that we stood in as a guarantor for marginal loans. And more importantly, they couldn't believe and, couldn't, uh, and just couldn't imagine that we have a bankruptcy law that allows you to innovate and disrupt and succeed and start all over again. 
And so these are the laws that we can't take for granted. Let's use them so that we can engage in international commerce. Just uh, last week, I came back in from Milan. I convened the first ever ministerial of international cabinet members that represent small and medium-sized businesses. I wanted to learn for you so I could report to you what the rules of engagement will be around the world when you interact with Korea, with Croatia, with Georgia, as we think about all the countries that present themselves as opportunities. What will be the rules of engagement? So I'm convening them and learning from them so that we can make sure that the SBA is responsive in the future for you, assuming that this is going to pass. And if it doesn't, we will find other ways to get there. But according to the census data that we just received, Hispanic-owned firms that export goods average receipts of $7.2 million. Imagine that compared to an average of $124,000 for Hispanic-owned firms that don't export. Hispanic-owned exporters average 19 employees on the payroll, and those that don't average seven employees. One out of every five American jobs is tied to exports. These jobs generally pay better, nearly 20% better. A new trade agreement would open more opportunities in Latin America and much beyond. Smaller exporters benefit disproportionately from these trade deals. Trade promotion opens doors for small businesses that would otherwise be closed. Small firms, small firms don't have offshore affiliates to help them overcome trade barriers. Most entrepreneurs don't have sufficient cash flow to risk common delays in payment. Many struggle to get financing for riskier foreign states and sales. Many small firms face tariffs as high as 35%. These are exactly the barriers that the new trade agreements would address. The Trans-Pacific Partnership can change the analysis for small business owners. So ladies and gentlemen, let me just say that the world is open to us in this age of the modern era. Whether you are in trade or you're not, as soon as you light up your website, you are in international commerce. Let's seize the moment and let's take advantage of this so that we can replicate the stories over and over and over again, such as mine. Having been born in Little Guadalajara, Jalisco, when my grandmother said, if you work hard and you bring others along, Someday, you might be able to work in an office, although we've been migrant workers, and you could even be a secretary. The good Lord heard her and allowed me to hold office and to be a cabinet secretary. <laughs> so mano a mano, a que juntarnos, let's come together as one. Let's work together, strategize together, and open new markets together. Show them what we are capable of doing. Let's lead this nation at a time when nachos are America's pastime. America's voice is Christina Aguilera's. And on the Supreme Court, we have a beautiful woman, graceful woman named Sonia Sotomayor. This is the time for us to seize the opportunity that presents itself. The world is ours. Together, we will win. And together, working together, we can do anything. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much.